Well, hello everyone, welcome. Today I wanna to talk about the fourth conic section, the hyperbola. So get some writing materials and let's do some good thinking and writing. As you know, those two should go together. In fact, thinking means connecting things. And when you write your thoughts down, you're connecting your mind with another mind. You're either writing to another person, another person's mind will then have access to what you were thinking, or you can even be writing to yourself at a later date, your future mind. So let's have a good record um, of our thoughts. But before we talk about hyperbolas, let's quickly talk about uh, ellipses because we're going to go from there. So you should be seeing my screen now of the ellipse. And it's on a Cartesian coordinate grid, but if you remember the um, Euclidean definition of ellipse says that any point on the ellipse, x, y, the distance from that point to a focus, we'll call this distance one, plus the distance from that point, same point to the other focus, distance two, that distance one plus the distance two, that has to equal a fixed constant. And if you will then take a peek at the uh, the equation there, you'll notice that there's a plus sign. Why is that? Well, because it's plus right there. Okay, so now let's move on to a hyperbola. A hyperbola looks like this. And so it's, it's kind of got the same idea of um, an ellipse. You've got a focus here and a focus here and so forth. Uh, but instead of the space being curved in on itself, it's kind of like bent out away from itself. And so it's the, the distance from any point on the hyperbola. Here's your point. The distance from that point to one of the foci and then the distance from that point to the other foci. I'll call this one D1 here and this one D2. We would say that distance one, something something distance two is also a constant number that doesn't change, but now it's going to be, guess what? Yeah, it's gonna be minus. Always the larger one minus the smaller one, whichever, whichever distance that works out. So if you look over here at the um, equation, it looks identical to the ellipse except it's subtraction. Okay. Now, when you add, order does not matter. But when you subtract, order does matter. And so when you look at the graph of a hyperbola here, your mind should first find the subtraction sign. But then you have to think about which thing is first. Um, and the one that I've illustrated here, the X group is first. And that's why if you look at the graph of the hyperbola in red here, it is oriented horizontally with a major axis that goes through the middle horizontally. If for some reason you would have the y minus k something squared over a squared minus the x minus h squared over b squared equals one. If you had had that, it would have opened vertically. And now why do you get two of them? Uh, let me see if I can show this. Why do you get two? All right, so um, if you take a, a cone and you slice it, Imagine if I had a second cone that came off of this one. If I just extended this line down and this line up and had another cone here in midair that would do that. If I were to slice it, if you can see the top slice, it would intersect the other cone. And so when I get a hyperbola here, I would get a curve kind of on the, uh, what is that? That's going to be your right side. If you get a curve on this side, if I sliced it this way, I would get another curve over here. And that's why there's actually two of those. But back then to the, the pad here. All right, so let's now do some detailed notes. Here we go. So hyperbola. I'm going to do the hyperbola itself in red. So the actual graph of the equation, which is the collection of the solution points, is going to be here in red. But there's some other very technical properties about the hyperbola that we need to talk about. And so that's what all the other stuff is, is for. Now, again, this one is oriented horizontally because as you can see, your mind should first come in here and find the subtraction sign right there. And then your question should be, which one's first? Well, the X value is first. So the orientation is going to be horizontal. It's gonna, 
it's going to be horizontally rather than vertically opening. Okay, so how would you write that? Well, that's kind of hard. How would you say that in words so that it makes sense? So the orientation would be horizontal if the X group is first and it would be a vertical if the Y group is first. Okay, now the A is always going to be under the first thing. And in this case, the A can be larger or smaller than B, but it's always gonna be the first thing. Um, actually, that was a little bit ahead of myself. Let me do the center next. The center is always going to be HK. But here's the thing, the H always goes with the X. So our center then is gonna be in blue there on that one right there. And the center here is gonna be zero, zero. Okay, now we have this thing that's uh, a transverse axis. The transverse axis is going to be the distance of 2A. And let me illustrate it now on um, the graph. Let's see, can I do a blue? Yeah, I can do a blue. A blue, it'll be this distance from here to here, kind of from vertex to vertex if you want to call it that. So in blue now, this is the transverse axis. Okay, and our vertices now sit right here. These blue points now are vertices. So notice the vertex of each of the hyperbolas that sits on the graph and the center are all connected then by this transverse axis, which is 2A, okay? Conjugate axis, let's see if I can change colors. What's another good color? I'll do green. Tr the conjugate axis is the distance um, to B. <laughs> or not to B. Uh, the conjugate axis is going to be this here. It's going to be perpendicular to it. And this one actually runs a little off the screen. I'll talk about that here in a, in a minute. Okay, the foci. The foci are going to be plus and minus. I'll see if I can do this in purple plus and minus C units from the center. And they're going to be on the uh, line that connects the transverse axis. So um, I got a little bit of clutter in here. Let me see if I can, well, let me just zoom in. I'll just do one of them. I'm not sure what that is for. But, oh, that was V for vertex. Um, the distance here out in front is C. So the focus is going to sit right there and the vertex then is the blue dot right there. See, remember I said this is getting kind of technical. How do you find C then? Well, um, C is actually, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Now remember when we did um, ellipses, the C squared was the difference of the two. Well, now we're back to plus. There's something with the switch, when the sign is negative on the equation, the sign is the opposite then when you do the C values. And that would take too long to explain that. I'd have to really do some reading to wrap my head around that again. Um, but uh, for a hyperbola, it's A squared plus B squared. Now, uh, I actually forgot to put vertices on here, so let's add this. I'm do it in black. Vertex. Vertex is going to be um, plus and minus A units from the center. And it's always going to be the end of the um, transverse axis. So if I come back over here now, this distance that's A. Okay. All right. Now, if you'll notice, there's asymptotes here. And what the graph does is it will, let's see if I can do the laser. Here we go. The graph will start at the vertex and then it will approach, but not ever touch this asymptote. So if I come over here on the left-hand side, starting from that vertex, it's going to come down and approach, but not ever contact the hyperbola, I'm sorry, the, the asymptote. So if I did, if I extended this asymptote out, all the way, 
So then the hyperbola graph will start here and then it will get closer and closer and closer and closer, but never, never touch. Okay, so how do you find the asymptotes? Well, the, asym the easiest way to find the asymptotes is to make a box from the transverse and conjugate axis. So let me make a little room here. I need to erase that word. Um, you're going to get a box. And let's pick a color that might work here. I will do maybe hot pink. If you go to your transverse axis, and I'm going to erase some more stuff just so that you can see it properly. If you go to your transverse axis, it goes left and right. This one goes left and right um, three units. So the total distance is six all the way across. Th this one, the, the conjugate axis, the one in green there, actually goes up six units. And that's a little bit off the, the grid space here, but you'll get the idea. If I make a box out of these two lines, so I come up here and down there, up here and down there, but then I'll go to the ends of where these meet, here to here, and then here to here, And sorry that the numbers aren't working out to be whole numbers. Um, hyperbolas don't lend themselves to nice, easy integer values. If you've got integers in one spot, let's say with the center and the, the, the vertices, you're going to have probably a, a radical something somewhere with the asymptotes or with uh, the foci or something like that. So if you can then make a box, then your asymptotes go along the diagonals of those boxes. So your diagonals then, your asymptotes are the diagonals of that box. So um, how would we say this? You would say make a box from the transverse axis and the conjugate axis and then the asymptotes are the diagonals. So how do you then put all of this stuff together? Okay, so that was my maybe my example. Now let's look at one where we actually have some numbers. Um, that would be maybe this one right here. Now I've given you both the equation and the graph. And let's get in and talk about this one little piece at a time. Okay, so the first thing I notice is it's got a negative sign right there, right? Okay, that means it's a hyperbola, not an ellipse. Alrighty, and I see that my Y package is first. That means it's going to up and open up and down. So here's the actual end orientation on the graph. Now, you don't know this from the beginning, what this act, these actual points are. You would get this in the end, but in your mind, you should be thinking, oh, it opens up and down. Okay, the, f the next thing I would do then in order to actually graph it from scratch is I would figure out where the center is. Center, what's the center? Don't tell me three negative one. The H always goes with the X, so it's going to be uh, negative one, three. And if you'll look here, the point right there says uh, it's at the point negative one, three, right? I'm gonna start at the origin, and I'm gonna go left one, and then up three, and then there's my center, okay? Now, the next thing I would do is I would figure out the um, transverse and the uh, conjugate axis. Now the transverse axis always goes through the vertices so that's probably the one I want to do first. Let me do that in blue. So the transverse axis then involves 2a. Well what is a there? This is now a squared so if a squared is equal to 4 a is equal to 2 and then so 2a is actually equal to 4 as well. So from the center, I'm going to go up two units, one, two, right there is a vertex, and then I'm going to go down two units, and right there is a vertex, and so my transverse axis then is four units total, okay? Now, 
Uh, conjugate axis. I think we did that in green last time. So conjugate axis is equal to 2B. Or not 2B. I have an email. And so then B squared is always the second one. Okay. Notice uh, my transverse axis was 2A. A is under the Y. Notice I went up and down from there, right? Because my A value was associated with my Y. The B value is associated with X. So B squared is equal to 6, which means B is equal to the square root of 6, or approximately, oh, let's see here, what did I get? Um, 2.45. So then I would go left 2.45 units. So let's do the little laser hopper. I would go left one, two, and then a little bit less than half that way. And then I would go one, two, and a little bit less than half that way. So back to the marker, one, two, a little bit less there. And then one, two, and a little bit less than half there. Now, um, I'm gonna draw my box. My box then is going to be connect, make a make a, a line out of this, up and down, a line out of that, up and down, and then um, I'm gonna do my transverse axis endpoints, go left and right from that vertex, and then go left and right from that vertex, and then here now is my box. So in pink now, my box goes to here, there and then right there and then right there and then I get this nice asymptote there through the diagonals and then a nice asymptote right there through the diagonals I hope you can see those in pink okay and then to actually graph it this is all I need now to graph it I would start from the vertex in red and then I would kind of come up and approach the asymptote on that side, come up and approach the asymptote on that side, and then start from the vertex down below, and then approach from there, and then approach from there. But don't touch and don't cross. Okay, that would be my graph. Let's now talk about some of the other values that we might have. Okay, so um let's do the vertices vertices okay so the vertices are going to be from the center up two units and from the center down two units so the vertex i'm gonna have two of them the vertex let's see if i can do laser pointer red the vertex is going to be this location right here which is up two units from the center and this location right here which is down two units from the center so if the center's at negative one, three, and so then my vertex is going to be, the top one's going to be negative one, um, five, and then the bottom one is negative one, um, one, okay? Those are the vertex points. Now, foci, we haven't drawn the foci in here yet. Where are the, where are the foci gonna go? Well, I gotta find, I gotta find C. Okay, so C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And from the equation, a squared was um, 4, and b squared was 6. Um, don't square 4 and 6. Those are already squared. Okay, So c is then equal to the square root of 10. And so what is that? Square root of 10, that's approximately 3.1. Okay, So my foci are 3.1 units up from the center, if I go one, two, three, right there, there's a focus. And if I go down, one, two, three, all the way down at the bottom, hopefully you can see that there's another focus. Let me see if I can get the laser. Man, it's getting really cluttered in here. Let's do, let's do blue, because it's on the axis. Okay, starting from the center, it's gonna go one, two, three, and then point one up. And then from the center, again, it's going to go down one, two, three, and here. Here's my other focus. My focus is right there and right here. How would I write these points? Well, so foci are three units away from the center. The center is negative one, three. So the foci are going to be two points. So negative one and then plus, let's do, let me just do it at the exact value. 
what was it, the square root of 10? So this is gonna be then three plus root 10, and then it's gonna be negative one and three minus root 10. Okay, now how do you get the equations for the asymptotes? Well, um, this one's not centered at the origin. You would probably have to do two different lines. Um, you would have to get a point here on the diagonal. You can get that point. You can get a point there on the diagonal. And then you would have to then find the equation of the line that connects those two points. This one, uh, what would it look like? Your, your y-intercept is not going to be very easy there with that one. It's this, this location right here. So you have to get two different points and find the equation of the line. Um, that's, what, that's an earlier exercise. I will leave that to you. I think I've got all the, the crucial points now for this um, hyperbola. I'm looking at my notes here just to make sure I've got everything. Um, I think so. Yeah, all right. So, back to me. Woo! How do you, where do you find hyperbolas in life? Well, sometimes some comet um, things follow uh, hyperbolic paths. Sometimes you want a hyperbolic reflector or a collector if you're dealing with an antenna of some kind because they do have a focus that's slightly different, maybe than a, than a parabola or something like that. So um, the uses for it are not quite as common or not quite as easy as maybe for a circle or a, an ellipse or for a parabola but it's out there and it's it's a bit technical but it's good and so you may be thinking gee when am i ever going to use this in my job probably never and that's okay uh, your work doing these kinds of problems trains your mind to manage lots of different details and they all have to go together properly now you've got to make sure that the the center and the foci and the vertices and the uh, the little box there for your asymptotes it's all got to work together to perform the right task if one piece is out of line it'll be crooked and bent and won't work together so this is kind of a complicated puzzle and um the mathematics here teaches your mind not just to, to account for all kinds of different details and all kinds of different properties and things but it shows you when you're wrong um, and it shows you when you're right. The truths of math can be demonstrated. And so this is a conscious, almost a tangible sort of way to help your mind how to think. There's other times in life when you're going to have to do organization of details and fine tune and pay attention to a negative sign there and what comes first and so forth. Maybe not in terms of a math sense, but lots of things that are interconnected and boy, you've, they've all got to work together right. How are you going to do that when it's abstract and maybe not even mathematical? Maybe it's in some other discipline. Uh, that'll be really difficult. Uh, it'll be easier if you've had training in mathematics. So don't look at this and go, oh, it's just going to help me balance my checkbook or something like that. No, it's training your mind to think. Everybody can kind of feel. You know, our emotions usually work um, pretty easily. The mind doesn't do that. The mind requires training. And mathematics trains your mind to think. And then that strength can then be applied to other areas. So um, it's good, even if it is hard. Just because something's hard doesn't mean it isn't good. So be strong. Wrestle with it. Um, master these lessons. It's good for your mind. Um, so uh, may your days be merry and bright. And may all your mathematics be right. And if not, you can figure it out and fix it. <laughs>